uh, for those of you whose uh, first time it is to be here in the Basilica since uh, last year. Uh, I think you can, we can safely say there has been a little bit of a change. Um, uh, so I hope that uh, it, it feels a little bit different in terms of maybe drawing all of us together in prayer and uh, in, in an atmosphere of prayer, I should say. So I welcome you all, wherever you've come from, especially those of you who are here with us from the Diocese of Kilmore and the Diocese of Drummore. I welcome the concelebrating priests who are here with us this afternoon as well, as well as the organizers for both dioceses for Kilmore, Father Anthony Fagan, parish priest of Virginia County Cavan, for Drummore, Father Jarlath Kushnahan, parish priest of Newry County Down. Our uh, music this evening, or this afternoon, is led by our Director of Sacred Music here at the Shrine, Una Nolan, who is our organist and cantor, ably assisted by uh, her assistant, Claire Lavin. Wherever you've come from, near or far, whether you're here with Drummore or Kilmore, whether you're here with family group, maybe you might even be here on your own, you're most, most welcome. All of us have prayers and intentions from people who've asked for our prayers, I've no doubt from yourselves as well, people who have asked you to pray for them and we do so in the context of this Mass. There are groups from all over, I say. There's a particularly special group from uh, Kilbritton and, and Bandon in West Cork who are coming here on pilgrimage for over 60 years, they tell me, and we remember as well their deceased members. So we might just show a little bit of appreciation for that uh, in 60 years. I don't know, where are, you, where, where are you in the Basilica? Can you hold up your hands or your heads or... Maybe stand up here. Oh, you're over here, are you? They're very shy. Let's say they're over here and over here. Oh, you're split up. You're all over the place. Right, okay. Uh, so you're very, very welcome. Uh, we welcome other groups as well, of course. Uh, there's a group here from, from England, from uh, St. Uh, Jude's Parish. They're just down here in front of me. You're very welcome with their pastor, Father Patrick, uh, who is with them this afternoon. You're very, very welcome. Our servers this afternoon come from Belnamore, which is in the Kilmore Diocese. So as I say, we draw together our prayers and intentions. I speak to you a little bit later on, later on about our Witness to Hope program, which is essentially about the renewal of the National Shrine here of Knock, and also to help uh, uh, maybe with the renewal of the church in the country as well. So that's a, a project that we have here based on three elements, the promotion of the shrine, the uh, renewal programs that we have in terms of faith formation, and also uh, the refurbishment, obviously, of the Basilica itself. So I'll speak to you a little bit later on about that. So we join together essentially in prayer, as I say, bringing together all of our needs and intentions. We pray for those who are sick. I welcome those who are here, especially who are incapacitated or sick in any way, uh, who are suffering in any way, mind, body, or spirit. You always have a very special place here in Knock with us. So we take this moment or two, a moment of quietness and contemplation, a moment where we bring all our prayers together. We include the prayers as well of those who are uh, watching us on our webcam from all over the world. I welcome you as well in particular. We draw all your prayers together with ours here in Knock today. So we take this moment or two of quietness, of stillness, moment of prayer, moment to understand that we are here in the presence of the Lord.
So now, friends, just before we begin, begin, I welcome joining me here in the sanctuary, along with Father Patrick Burke, our Master of Ceremonies this afternoon, as our chief celebrant and our preacher, the Bishop of Kilmore, Bishop Leo O'Reilly, and joining him here, of course, uh, uh, joining him here uh, in the sanctuary as well, is Bishop John, the Bishop of uh, Drumore. Uh, you're most welcome. Uh, you're very welcome this afternoon to our Basilica. And it's good to have both of you here with us, and uh, we just give them a warm welcome, please, this afternoon. <laughs> and so now I invite Bishop Leo to lead us in the celebration of the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I join Father Richard in welcoming you all to celebrate this Eucharist in Knock, and especially the pilgrims from the dioceses of Dromore and Kilmore, and uh, a very warm welcome particularly to our assisted pilgrims and our sick pilgrims. It's been a wonderful transformation here in the Basilica in Knock since our last visit uh, this time last year. Uh, I congratulate Father Richard and all his co-workers on the tremendous work that has been done and I understand it is not yet complete. Uh, I pray that the renewal of the Basilica will bring about a renewed church in Ireland and that many more people will come here like you on pilgrimage to pray and to a witness to your faith. Today is also Father's Day. We remember fathers and we pray for them, ask God to bless them on this day. And today is also the national celebration for uh, the centenary of St. Columbanus. 1,500 years ago, uh, since the death of St. Columbanus, the great missionary, founded monasteries in Luxai and Bobbio and other places on the European continent, and in many ways was uh, the great apostle of the renewal of faith in Europe. So as we pray for the renewal of the church in Ireland today, we ask his intercession and we pray with him. So now to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist uh, we remember that we are gathered in the name of Jesus and in the presence of Jesus. The Gospel today, the story of Jesus saving the apostles on the stormy sea, assures us that no matter what the extremity or the crisis, Jesus is near, he is with us. We now ask for his help and his pardon for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. first reading, a reading from the book of Job. From the heart of tempest, the Lord gave Job his answer. He said, Who pent up the sea behind closed doors when it leapt tumultuous out of the womb, when I wrapped it in a robe of mist and made black clouds its swaddling bands, when I marked the bounds it was not to cross and made it fast with a bolted gate? Come thus far, I said, and no farther. Here your proud waves shall break. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The love of Christ overwhelms us when we reflect that if one man has died for all, then all men should be dead. And the reason he died for all was so that living men should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised to life for them. From now onwards, therefore, We do not judge anyone by the standards of the flesh. Even if we did once know Christ in the flesh, that is not how we know him now. And for anyone who is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old creation has gone, and now the new one is here. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ, enlighten me. 
From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. <clears throat> With the coming of evening, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him just as he was in the boat. And there were other boats with him. Then it began to blow a gale, and the waves were breaking into the boat so that it was almost swamped. But he was in the stern, his head on the cushion, asleep. They woke him and said to him, Master, do you not care? We are going down. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Quiet now, be calm. And the wind dropped and all was calm again. Then he said to them, why are you so frightened? How is it that you have no faith? They were filled with awe and said to one another, How can this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Two very sad stories dominated our news during the past week. The tragic deaths of six young people, five of them from Ireland, in the balcony disaster in Berkeley, California, uh, in a way it touched us all. And then the senseless murder of nine people praying in a church in North Carolina, perhaps didn't touch us as closely, but nevertheless, uh, it, uh, it was something to cause great shock and indignation. And we, we feel sympathy for all those affected. We try to show solidarity with the bereaved families and friends of those who died. We feel their loss and I suppose all of us are somehow aware that a tragedy like this could touch any of us or any of our families. Today's Gospel recounts the miracle of the calming of the storm by Jesus familiar with the story, they're out in the middle of the lake, the storm suddenly arises, the apostles are terrified, their boat is going to be swamped. Jesus is asleep. And that story can't fail to remind us of yet another tragedy being played out, not just once, but week in, week out, day in, day out, in the Mediterranean Sea. There, thousands of migrants and would-be refugees, sometimes in rickety boats, have perished in desperate attempts to reach mainland Europe. And criminal gangs are making fortunes in a modern slave trade which ruthlessly exploits unfortunate people who are fleeing war, oppression, poverty. Happily, in recent weeks, our government 
decided to send a rescue ship to assist with the efforts to save at least some of the lives of these unfortunate people. For the refugees whom they rescue, people who are often starving, terrified, in imminent danger of death, the sight of this boat, this ship, the Eli Ethna, and the crew coming to their aid, offering food, clothing, and safety, that must appear to them to be just as great a miracle as the one that took place on the Sea of Galilee. We can be proud of what those crews have already achieved in saving so many from certain death. Sadly, many more of the migrants were not so lucky. So we can take some pride in the way our Navy are doing such a wonderful job on our behalf. But we must be prepared to do more, and to urge our government to do more. Our generosity is considerable, but it appears to be calculated. I believe that when this ship was being sent out to take part in the rescue mission, the condition was that none of the migrants rescued would be brought to Ireland. We can't really be too proud of that. It would be like the Good Samaritan coming to the help of the wounded man, bandaging him up and then abandoning him. We've been very welcoming over the years to migrants coming to our shores to find a new life. And we've been generally good at integrating them into our communities. We may not think so, but the numbers that we are taking are relatively small when compared with other countries. When we look at the figures for asylum seekers in Europe for last year, we see that Germany had over 200,000. That's one asylum seeker for every 400 Germans. Sweden was next with over 80,000. That's one to every 120 Swedes. Our neighbours in the UK are well down the list. They took 32,000. That's one for every 2,000 of their population. And we had around 1,500 applicants. That's one for every 3,000 of us. I believe that our people would want our government to be more generous than that. Events of the past week show that, as a people, we feel for others who experience tragedy in their lives. We are generous to those who are in need. We have shown time and again that when there were natural disasters in the world, our response has always been generous. What's happening in the Mediterranean is a disaster of huge proportions. There's no simple solution to it, but solutions have to be found. And we have to let our government know that we want them to be at the forefront in finding solutions, even if they're going to cost us money. Happily, it wasn't all bad news last week. Some good news was the publication of the encyclical letter from Pope Francis on the environment. And that has something to say that's relevant to this situation. That encyclical reminds us that the world is not ours to do what we like with. The world is God's creation. The, the, the majesty of God is expressed very vividly in that first reading where Job uh, is silent 
and realizes that God is great. And the world was created by God to be shared by everybody, not to be exploited by the powerful and the wealthy. The people who are fleeing war in Syria and Iraq, who are fleeing oppression in Eritrea and Sudan, other parts of Africa, poverty elsewhere, they are entitled to a share of the goods of the earth. And by comparison with them, we in Europe are wealthy and powerful. We have an obligation to do our part in helping them to build new lives free from violence and exploitation. Pope Francis tells us that technology alone will not solve our problems. There must be, he says, a revolution in our thinking and our attitudes, a real conversion, what he calls a change of humanity. And he quotes the ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew, who has written on the same subject. He asks us to replace consumption with sacrifice, greed with generosity, wastefulness with a spirit of sharing, an asceticism which entails learning to give and not simply give up. It is a way of loving, of moving gradually away from what I want to what God's world needs. It is liberation from fear, greed, and compulsion. That phrase, it is a way of loving. We have to be converted to that way of loving. And the way of loving is Christ's way. Christ's way of loving that is prepared to sacrifice and invites us, urges us, to do likewise. St. Paul put it in the second reading, the love of Christ overwhelms us when we reflect that the reason he died for all was so that all the living should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised to life for them. That kind of loving would mean a new way of living, a real revolution. It's a call to conversion. As somebody has said wisely, we must learn to live more simply so that others may simply live. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came on from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now bring our prayers and petitions before God our Father. We remember all those who have asked us to pray for them and to make their intentions part of our pilgrimage here in Knock. For Pope Francis and for all who minister in the church, May the Holy Spirit help and guide them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the grace and courage to live our faith and to care for and support for one another in these difficult times. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For healing and peace for all who are sick, elderly and disabled and for all who have crosses to carry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the pilgrims who come to knock, may the experience of pilgrimage send them forth renewed in faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously Lord. hear us. For people who suffer with illness, old age, and special needs, may they experience the healing presence and compassion of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our deceased loved ones, the faithful departed, and all the dead, may they rest in peace with the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray to Mary. Queen of Ireland, Shedavaha Widder, Carlonda Grasta, Tan Chirna Lap, the Spaniard who are the Mara, because the Spaniard Tara de Vrenisa, Never a Warher J, be Oring the Paki and Ish, Agus Aroro Marshaman. Father, we make these and all our prayers in union with the prayer and the sacrifice of Jesus, your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. We'll take a few moments for the after collection. Please pass the collection bags through the rows as the stewards and handmaids hand them out. Uh, thank you sincerely for your generosity to help uh, with the upkeep of the shrine. Pass them back through the rows, uh, please. Thank you.
Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of reconciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins, by his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. remain standing or are able to do so. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we 
celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Tania da Droru Agus Prihir Jedar de Agus Tashe de Vishnu Hagan Ara Arnahar Atanya Ganifa Danum Gadaga de Ria Inyanta de Heller and Talu Maranit Rurnia Arnaran Lehu will throw in a new Agus Maitu and Avirke Maravaha Mizna da Vehan of Fain is now Lig Shin Egahu or Seer Shin O Ulf. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And so now, friends, for the distribution of communion, just like for the anointing of the sick, can I ask you please to come forward to the priest that will be circling the sanctuary here, and can I ask you to come forward through the central aisle only and leave the side aisles to return to your seats. This uh, enables ease of movement and safety. So when you're coming forward, come forward through the central aisle only and return by the side aisles. And can I ask you to leave the seats in front of you go forward so that row by row you know exactly where you're coming to. Those who can only receive from the chalice can do so at the back of the altar. And those maybe who cannot come forward from their seat, if you simply let us know, a minister of the Eucharist or a priest will come to you.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord.
five glorious mysteries. The first glorious mystery, the resurrection. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The second glorious mystery, the Ascension. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The third glorious mystery, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The fourth glorious mystery, the Assumption of Mary into heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The fifth glorious mystery, the crowning of Our Lady, Queen of Heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, for bandaged children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us, and after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, grant that we beseech you that, meditating upon these mysteries in the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The prayer to Our Lady of Knock. Our Lady of Knock, Queen of Ireland, you gave hope to your people in a time of distress and comfort them in sorrow. You have inspired countless pilgrims to pray with confidence to your divine Son, remembering his promise. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. Help me to remember that we are all pilgrims on the road to heaven. Fill me with love and concern for my brothers and sisters in Christ, especially those who live with me. Comfort me when I am sick, lonely, or depressed. Teach me how to take part ever more reverently in the most holy Mass. Give me a greater love for Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Pray for me now and at the hour of my death. Amen. Our Lady of Knock.
Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of your kingdom, where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. So now, friends, can I invite you, wherever you can do so, to stand in honor and reverence of the Blessed Sacrament. We take this time as a time for prayer for healing in our own personal lives. And again, we remember those members of our families who have asked for us to pray for them at this particular time, especially those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit, confined to homes, nursing homes, and hospitals. Lord, Touch with your healing hand all who labor and are overburdened among us today. Let your spirit bring to all who are sick wholeness in body and healing of heart. Relieve the sufferings of all who live with continuous pain. Hear the prayers for everyone attending doctors and hospitals. Surround with those handicapped in mind or body and all elderly people. With faith in your power to bring healing, we pray for children who are sick. Lord, we come to you in our brokenness, wounded in our relationships, wounded by our memory of painful experiences in times past, wounded by sin and guilt in our lives today. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. You came to feed the lonely with your company to feed the sad with your hope. Your love touched all you met. You helped them change and grow. You nourished them with your love and led them to the Father. Your love opened them to the spirit of love. As we meet you, the bread of life, feed us, we pray, with your love. Lead us to the Father. Open us to your Holy Spirit so that we can care for others and help them grow in your love. Stay with us, Lord Jesus, as evening begins to fall, and be our companion on our way. Set our hearts on fire with new hope, so that we may recognize you in the scriptures and in the breaking of bread. O Jesus, 
We believe in you. We hope in you. We love you. Strengthen our faith. Renew our hope and love and grant our prayers. Touch with your healing love, O oh Lord, all who feel the hurt of life's wounds. Long ago, when people prayed to you for healing, you listened to them, blessed them, and answered their prayer. Heal us now of our sinfulness and of the hatred that divides us. Take away our hardness of heart. Open our eyes, which are often blind to the needs of others. Remove our selfishness and our greed. Give us self-control at all times and fill our hearts with your eternal love. Jesus, we ask you now to bless all fathers on this Father Day. We ask you that you may once again instill in them the work of our Heavenly Father. We ask you to bless them, to be with them, we ask you for our appreciation of all fathers. Jesus, we turn to you now as we ask you to heal us, to bless us, and to fill us with your peace. sacrament of your body and blood bring healing to us all. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. And so now, friends, just before I invite Bishop Leo to bless any religious objects you may happen to have with you to conclude with the final prayer, just to thank you all sincerely for being with us this afternoon, especially those of you from the Diocese of Kilmore and Drumore. I uh, thank Bishop Leo himself for that engaging homily, uh, certainly challenging homily to all of us in terms of uh, looking, essentially looking out for those who are extremely less, former, uh, less fortunate than ourselves and also to be aware of the challenges that face us not only here in this country but in Europe itself. Thank you very much indeed Bishop Leo for that and uh, for your wonderful words. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank Bishop John McAreevy as well for being with us this afternoon and to thank again our organisers for Kilmore, Father Anthony Fagan and for Drummore, Father Jarlett Kushnahan. Uh, uh, thank all the groups that have been here as well and to thank our Director of Music, Una Nolan and Claire Lavin for their music this afternoon. Thank you very much indeed. And thanks to our stewards and handmaids. And just remains for me to wish you a very safe journey home. And please, God, we will see you at some other point again during the pilgrimage season and to keep in your prayers as well our project of Witness to Hope. So I invite Bishop Leo now to bless any uh, religious objects you have and to conclude with the final prayer. Almighty Father, bless 
these medals and religious objects. May the saving presence of Christ be in the hearts of those who use them and in the homes in which they are placed. I bless them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Please bow now, bow your heads and pray for God's protection as we leave Knox Shrine today. Father, in your great mercy, help your pilgrim people to remain close to you in prayer and give them a true love for each other. We have come to Knox to give thanks and to petition, for our, petition you for our needs. We have prayed and celebrated the Eucharist together as we journey from Knock, keep alive in us the memory of your love. May we bring from this place strength to carry our burdens and zeal to live the gospel. Through the prayers of Our Lady of Knock, we are confident that you will watch over us always and fill our hearts with your love. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our pilgrimage to Knock Shrine has come to an end. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks, God. God. There were people.